So we have different point of views. But at the end, after several months of discussion and negotiation, uh, we agreed, uh, also in connection to the next generation EU program, uh, to have a decisive reform in uh, Polish judiciary and rule of law. And what is interesting, I think, is that Poland is uh, gradually delivering on this. So we have a good step further and we are working on this. So Poland gets its 36 billion euros in loans and grants soon? It starts coming in soon now? Well, we, when we will receive the request, as always we say, we will assess. Okay. But what we see politically is that things are moving. Good. And this is very good. Yeah. One of the big topics here is fragmentation, as you know, and I know it's something that you've talked about quite a lot. I spoke with um, Christian Lindner yesterday, the German finance minister, and there are a number of issues, I think, that are causing uh, problems with neighbours. And it's, it's, you know, the, the, the now the desire to re relax the state aid rules, which not everybody is happy about, the fact that the German business and consumer has been subsidised for the higher energy costs, which not everybody else is happy about at this stage. Do you think that Germany's apparent focus on its own issues is generating fragmentation with other Eurozone partners? And if so, how can that be stopped? Well, look, I think it's perfectly understandable that each European country is also looking to its own response. Uh, what is important, I think, is two things. First, uh, that what we decide is not increasing the differences among the uh, EU and especially the euro area. We share the same currency and we can't afford to have two um, deep differences. Uh, and this is the matter of the state aid, um, how much you lose on the rules for state aid, um, and this is something we are discussing. Just to be clear, you're not in favour of the state aid rules being relaxed? I'm in favour if this is very targeted and limited. I think that if the loosening disrupts our model, our model is based on competition, uh, openness. Of course, we have to take stock of the fact that the situation needs uh, in some decisive sectors to loosen state aid rules. When I was in office in Italy, we had problems to support uh, semiconductors companies uh, because of the risk that they were too uh, big in the European single market, that they were very, very little in the global market. So, of course, we have to relax in some sectors. But this is not a green light for state aid, because in this case it would increase the divergence. The other point is, do we have a common response? Adding to the national responses, I think we need a common response. But it is not only a matter of solidarity, it is a matter of scale. If we want to be competitive, we need to do so with the scale of a single market of 450 million people, not each, even Germany, which is the biggest. Paolo, I'm going to go back to the, the, the Russia conversation, which I had, obviously, with uh, President Duda yesterday as well. Is Europe prepared economically on two fronts? One, for the ongoing war and what the ramifications that is do, meaning for the European economy, and two, to carry on an enormous level of support economically uh, for the Ukrainians? Well, listen, I was really uh, and positively surprised on how much the European Union was united in reacting to the Russian aggression. Uh, honestly, I still remember when I was the Italian foreign minister after the, Korea, the Crimean annexation, and it was very difficult to agree on very, very light packages of sanction. Here, we uh, delivered in last year 19.7 billion. I mean, European Union, member states, European uh, EIB, etc. 19.7 billion of aid. And this year we already decided for 18 billion of concessional loans. The fact that we decided already is very important for the stabilization of the perspective of the public finance in Ukraine. So. Uh, so far, so good, I think. 
And of course, we have a challenge to um, continue and increase this support. Why is it a challenge? Because the consequences of this war are not identical in all the advanced economy in the world. Europe is more affected by this crisis than our partners and friends for US or Canada or Japan.